Okay, it's been a long time since I tried to cast a small bit of copper, and so I'd like to have some fun and give that a go. This is a piece of brass, and the reason I have that is I'd like to uh, put little insets into this copper casting, just for fun, see if that'll work. And there's also another reason why I have the brass. From what I've read and from my very limited experience, pure copper is very difficult to cast, but that can be improved with the addition of certain things, and one of those things is zinc. And brass is made of copper and zinc, so adding a little bit of brass should help with the casting. By the way, the brass insets don't count towards that. I'll add a little brass in the crucible later on. But there are different types of brass, and there's also a downside to adding too much brass, which I'll go into towards the end of this video. You guys know how I go about these projects, guerrilla style. Just with whatever I've got on hand, the only thing I bought was the clay. The white one says modeling clay, whereas the dark one just says clay. Knowing I'll likely need more than one go, I made a second mold. I put the insets into just one. By the way, I dried these for about an hour in an oven. So this is my ghetto style crucible, which is a modified candle cup holder. The scale that forms with this sort of operation is ridiculous. A necessary item is flux. I've got to buy some refractory materials for my forge, and I think that company also sells crucibles, so I'll probably pick one or two up at that time. This lump should be almost pure copper. I toss a small piece of brass in and add some brass granules for good measure. melting temperature of copper is about 2,000 degrees Fahrenheit, and brass is just slightly lower. I shouldn't have done that second pour, though at the end of the day it really didn't matter. Not to spoil the video halfway in, but these were basically failures, though I gained some insight, and so in that way I suppose it's not so much a failure. And do yourself a favor and don't be an idiot and wear shorts like I do when handling liquid molten metal.
This is the one with the brass insets, and I had high hopes for that pour. So this is the last thing I poured, the extra material. This first pour has got a weird groove. And this is the one with the brass insets, and it also has that weird groove. The one upside is that the brass insets are firmly intact. So that could be very interesting for future castings if I can get my technique down. I decide to show you guys something I learned other than the fact that I stink at casting. I'll pour the remaining amounts of copper and brass I have into this mold. So this slug is about 70% copper and about 30% brass, and what I'll do is reheat it and then try to forge it. While copper can be forged in a somewhat traditional blacksmithing sense, the addition of the brass really makes this very brittle, as you can obviously see. <laughs> 